Hey, welcome to the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick. I'm Chung. And we talk about all things Golden State Warriors from an old school fan perspective. Because if you didn't love them at their worst, you don't deserve them at their best. Wow, that seems pretty harsh. You know, life is, uh, life is tough. I would argue that a podcast is not a proper form for life lessons, though. Well. A basketball podcast. I beg to differ. Okay. <laughs> So uh, what's uh, what's new as the uh, preseason starting pretty soon? Training camp can't wait. So exciting! You mentioned to me earlier that we're at the tail end of the uh, the doldrums of the NBA off season, right? Like you're really scraping at the bottom of the barrel right now for like any any sort of like NBA newsworthy like items, right? So mm-hmm. I am looking forward to seeing who comes up as the next contender to knock off the Warriors off their perch. Well, what are your thoughts on that? I don't think anyone's going to do that, barring any injuries. Sure. Um, Good but, caveat. Yeah, but, um, you know, I've I've been impressed by uh, uh, some teams. I've, I think it's going to be interesting to see some of the challengers that come come at the Warriors. Hmm. Um, who, so who in the West uh, are you, are you uh, identifying as a threat to the Warriors? I was, I was laughing at the Rockets for uh, <laughs> <laughs> for for a minute um but i think they made some decent moves recently yeah know? they just uh they they got rid of ryan anderson's huge contract they mm-hmm. got they got uh they lost a young guy but then they picked up uh brandon knight and marquise chris right so yeah yeah two two imperfect players but two players that are actually uh could be legit rotation players maybe not in the playoffs but at least during the regular season and um they got rid of Anderson's contract. Yeah, that was huge. That was really, really huge. I love Ryan Anderson. He's a Cal Bear. Go Bears. Um, I still can't believe he became a professional basketball I know. player. <laughs> Although he did average 20 and 10 his, his, his freshman year. So Is he British? No. Uh, who's the British guy? Oh, you're thinking of Richard Midgley as a point <laughs> <Okay>. guard? <laughs> or uh, Amit Samir, who is an Israeli center? <laughs> Or Sean Marks, who is a the Kiwi, uh, a, a New Zealander. Ki- he's Kiwi, yeah, yeah, he's a Kiwi who's now the GM for the, uh, for the that's Nets. A, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of international players. Yeah. Um, anyways, this is not the Cal basketball podcast um, yet. Yet, yeah. Well, I'm working on it. I, I like Brandon Knight a lot. I think that he's uh, always been in uh, bad situations and was never able. To, well, he was. I mean, when he made it, when he ended up on the Suns. They had Goran Dragic and Isaiah Thomas <laughs> at the same time, right? Yeah. Like, talk about, and they had, he had just signed a huge contract too, you know. Um, I think when he was with the Pistons, he didn't have great, like, great opportunities to, you know, to thrive. So, um, I like, I like that move for the for the Rockets just because CP is going to need some time off. He's old, so I think he's Brendan Knight is a great backup point guard and could also be a starter when CP is like out, you know, yep. game or two too. So. Uh, Marquise Chris is a complete head case. <laughs> he is. Immature head case who's constantly sulking on the court. Um, but he's a big who can shoot threes as athletic and, you know, who knows? Yeah. I, mean, I think, uh, I think Maury did a, did a good job. I mean, the, it's a, it's a complete win just by getting rid of Anderson's contract. Um, but then getting a guy who, you know, like in Mar- Marquise Chris, who could, uh, in the right environment, you know, like kind of grow up a little bit and, and yeah. play his play his part, being a 6'10 guy, doing what he does athletically. And then, like you said, when uh, Chris Paul breaks down and <laughs> misses half the season, at least you can plug in uh, Brandon Knight. Or Michael Carter-Williams. They have him too. Yeah, that guy's trash. Yeah, but he's a, gr- he's a decent – he's not a great starter, but he's a decent like, backup. Right, yeah, so they have yeah. three legit – Point guards. Yeah, no, Brandon yeah. Knight's good. Now he, I mean, he blew out his knee last year, but or last year or the year before, I forgot when. But he was super athletic, could shoot the three, good passer, seems like a good guy, like good, you know, good, uh, reasonable dude. So um, I like their backcourt, um, mm-hmm. the point guards, anyways. Um, James Harden obviously is one of the best players in the league. So one of the most boring players to watch. Yeah, you think so? I hate watching. Yeah, him, no, I'm, I was being completely facetious. <laughs> I hate his game. <laughs> <laughs> this game's terrible. <laughs> I, I like the, the 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 step back. You don't like travel. step back threes and uh, free throws. <laughs> and like grabbing people's arms. Can I? I I wish I was a kid right now playing basketball because then like I would just try to grab people's arms or something. You know? Yeah. Like I think it's it's a an absurd. It just makes the game so ugly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Anyway. Um, 
Well, they got, I mean, Carmelo, right? He's probably going to start at the three. Um, Clint Capella resigned. So, yeah, I, that, tr- that Ryan Anderson trade made me a little bit more um, optimistic about the Rocket season. I mean, they're not going to take, uh, take down the Warriors, but I think they, they, they're not as bad as I thought they were going to be. If people talk about Ariza potentially coming back during the season, but how stupid is that? Like, oh, they're already talking about him coming back, like, as a, a, a midseason trade. Wait, didn't he just sign for a lot of money? Yeah. <laughs> like the Suns, right? $15 million for a year, but, like, people yeah. talk about that as, like, a buyout. I was like, really? You, you just signed this guy, and you're now you... Uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, but who P- else? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was going to say P.J. Tucker. He's he's going to be in, in the full... T- he's, I like him. I think yeah. he's great for what they need right he's yeah. also i like the the fact that he's all, he's probably as tall as chris paul he's like uh, <laughs> arguably <laughs> six he's listed at six four six five i don't know if he's really that tall <laughs> but uh yeah i like i like his game i've always liked his game he's, yeah. a, he's a bit like they, they call those kinds of players dogs right like he's he's a dog on the court you know like, like you i'm a dog in other ways not on the court i'm more of like a puppy on the court who else i think uh in the west yeah that's it yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. Like the, I think OKC is going to be great, but I don't think that they're going to be good enough to knock off the Warriors. Uh, I think the Lakers are underrated. I think the casual fan, I think they, the casual fan doesn't understand how good uh, Brandon Ingram can be, and um, I think Kuzma is pretty solid. And actually, as much as I dislike Lonzo Ball and the whole Ball thing. I like and, I like Lonzo. I don't care for his family too much, but I like him. Yeah, I, I think his even though he's not as great, even though he's not a good shooter, um, I think you just you watch him play. The guy has like these intangibles. You he's know what really I mean? Good. Like he knows to how to be in the right place at the right time, and he can do like the the simple things. And uh, his his court vision is is solid. You know, he's just skinny, and he was like what a nineteen twenty year old rookie last year. Yeah, you know what the the Lakers. Uh, uh, over underline is mm. what 48 and a half that's a good line yeah that's a that's a that's a good line to bet on i think yeah because that I, th- I feel like the lakers are going to be considerably better than last year obviously with lebron coming on um but then like the addition of lance stevenson made made me chip away a few wins <laughs> <laughs> that was a weird signing um and and uh who knows what's going to happen with uh what's his name um Rondo, yeah, Rondo. <laughs> Rondo's saying all the right things, yeah. but uh, I love we'll Rondo. See. I love, I love, and I wish the Pelicans would could have figured out a way to resign him because I think I thought he was perfect for them. Yeah, he's he's exactly what they needed last year, and that's he's the reason why I think he's besides Anthony Davis and um, and uh, uh, Drew Holiday, I think he's the, one of the biggest reasons why they made it to the second round. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, playoff Rondo. Um, yeah, forty eight and a half wins. I think the Lakers are gonna be okay. They're gonna be like a mid tier Western Conference like uh, playoff team, right? Yeah, and as some people have said, I think uh, we've talked about this before that uh, there's other teams. That, that people think that maybe the Lakers won't make the playoffs, right? But um, I think they will. Just I mean, LeBron's gonna make the playoffs. My scary scenario is if the uh, scenario. I like the way you pronounce that. <laughs> How do you pronounce it? What are you? What are you? European? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say it like that? <laughs> Scenario, <laughs> like a good American. <laughs> scenario. Scenario. What's the scenario? Right. That's, that's no, what... this, the game is with the scenario. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. You like you like had like a weird like uh, flashback where you were like a like European like gentleman or something. I was calling first. <laughs> um, the scenario that I'm talking about is. That I fear is if uh, the Lakers end up in the eighth seed and the Warriors get the first seed. Yeah, I don't. I don't ever want to be against LeBron. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine that? Like, because because it would be LeBron and all of his fearless young guys who's even who are even more fearless. And yep, um, yep, and and sort of galvanized by LeBron's presence, right? Exactly. Because yeah. I know when the Warriors play the Lakers, sometimes they kind of you know take the gas. There's off, always yeah the, war- off the gas. There's always that one game. Yeah, the last like I would, yeah, the last five six years, as, as long as the Warriors have been good, yeah, where the Lakers just destroy the Warriors, one yeah. game a season, right? Yeah. And uh, you know we've talked about this. We live in L.A. We're surrounded by Laker fans. A yeah. lot of our friends are Laker fans, so you start hearing the ooh, <laughs> yeah, please come on. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be a lot of that too. Um, 
but yeah, I think the Lakers will be better. Um, I think OKC is going to be pretty good. Um, I like what they did, and I was looking at their roster recently, and it looks it's fully formed, man. Like they got PG. I like Dennis Schroeder as oh, a point, backup yeah. point guard. Yeah, like he. He's really good. He's a head case. Talk he, about head cases. He's like uh, Russell Westbrook's like midget brother. I mean, like it's it's they have the same kind of attitude. Yeah, it's just that Russell Westbrook is better and bigger and can back it up more. Uh, Andre Robertson's going to be back. Yeah, uh, they signed Nerlens Noel. That's going to be great, a good signing. Great signing. Uh, I hear good things about that Diallo kid, that shooting guard. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, Patrick Patterson, another underrated signing. I think he's great. Yeah, he's really good. Uh, good three point shooter, um, good team player can can play the four, uh, can spell some minutes at the five. Mm-hmm. Um, like when they play small ball, I like him. So I think they're going to be good. They're not going to beat the Warriors a bit again. They're going to be better. Mm-hmm. They were pretty good last year, though, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the Jazz. Ah, yes. are a team because that team is like a team. They're really well rounded. They Mr. have Mitchell. Yeah, they have great like role players yep. um uh they have obviously the uh gobert they have defense they have offense and they have a variety of offensive kind of players right they have like d mitch um who can does anyone call him d mitch no you, i think you just made that up but i think if you start it now that we might create a movement hashtag d mitch yes um they have donovan mitchell who can do whatever he wants he's like a young Dwayne Wade almost. Um, I love his game. Yeah. He, he, Dwayne Wade is the perfect, uh, you know. How lucky are Favors the Favors resigned too. Derek Favors. That was their big uh, uh, free free agent. Uh, well, not free agent, but uh, someone who was potentially leaving. He, yeah. He resigned. I mean, they're just a well-rounded team. Great team. You know, and like, I think they play uh, scary. well together. It's scary to play against. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I would not be, I would not feel like super, I mean, I'm, I'm confident about the Warriors playing anyone, but Utah always kind of yeah. scares me a little bit. Good for them for getting for being lucky and smart enough to draft Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. Because otherwise they're like, you know, out of the playoffs. Sure. Right? Uh when right after Gordon Hay- uh, Hayward leaves. So who would have thought Mitchell would end up being the player that he was? Well because he at Louisville he he wasn't like no. yeah. And he I think he averaged like 12, 12, 14, 15 points a game. I, I didn't I don't pay attention to college basketball anymore. Although Patino is uh, well, th- th- sorry, disgraced bas- former basketball coach uh, <laughs> Rick Pitino is, uh, you know, not a not a great. I can't wait to see Al Pacino play him in the movie. <laughs> yeah, right. He's just Al Pacino is just gonna go through all the disgrace like uh, uh, Italian American coaches, Italian American uh, sports coaches. <laughs> Paterno, he did he did a great Paterno. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really embody that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the the Jazz are gonna be nasty. Uh, the Jazz are going to be nasty. The Spurs don't ever. People say don't ever count out the Spurs. Um, although it seems like it's going to be a bit of a different year, huh? I count them out. Yeah, they don't. They're, they're like DeRozan. I just don't think he, he is what he is. Sure. I don't think he's ever going to like put you over the top or anything. Yeah, Gasol's out. Uh, like the thing about Ginobili, Duncan, Kawhi, and Parker <sighs> is that. They just, you know, they had like a little something extra. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, at this point in their careers, these guys are kind of, I mean, they're they're all star players, right? But they're uh, not. They they haven't taken their teams anywhere. You know what I mean? It's always been like the guys that they had before. Well, so. they have two all stars. They have DeRoz- Demar Derozan and Lamarcus Aldridge, right? Mm-hmm. It's basically Aldridge's team at this point, right? Um, until he gets injured. Until he's just, but who'd have thought? Like he had that terrible season, or yeah. uh, with, with, and then he wanted to do, he wanted to get traded, and everyone's like, oh, he, because I think he was kind of a knucklehead towards the end of uh, his tenure in uh, in, in Portland, Portland too, yeah. right? I think he chafed when uh, Brandon Roy was, you know, him and Brandon Roy kind of like chafed like their 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 like sort of leadership and whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Damian Lillard was drafted, yep. I think he chafed at that a little bit too. So. Oh yeah. So yeah, you saw that coming, but then to turn that around and end up inheriting this team and becoming the leader of that team is pretty cool. You know? Yeah. Speaking of that Portland team, that that team, everybody pieced out after uh, that, like at the same time, right? It was, it was um, Batum. Yeah, and Wes Matthews and sure. Robin Lopez. Yep. That team w- would have been amazing. Um, yeah, but, they were, the, but then they re, they signed like Alan Crab, <laughs> right? <laughs> they signed Alan Crab, right? And, right. Uh, yeah, they got lucky with CJ McCollum. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, um, he's good. But um, bit of a crybaby, but yeah. Anyway, but uh, yeah, the Blazers they don't 
they don't scare me they don't scare me at all um i, I was i knew we were going to talk about this so i was just trying to do like a mental checklist of who who else would come out in the west right so we've addressed all the teams that are likely to be good playoff mm-hmm. teams um there's the nuggets the mavs who i think might be a sleeper because of Doncic, right um the blazers mm-hmm. and the pelicans mm-hmm. uh who else any other teams i'm missing wolves Oh yeah. Well, they seem like they. It sounds like they hate each other. It's kind of self-destructing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think like <laughs> bold prediction is that one of their players gets injured just because Thibodeau. Yeah. Beats the hell out of them. <laughs> <laughs> like I just don't understand the philosophy. I remember when he was a couple years ago when he was not coaching, he visited like the Warriors practice facility to take notes you know kind of hung out and i was like oh maybe he learned something yeah and like the, they were, the, the art uh, I, I think i read those articles too it was like oh yeah it seems like T- tom Thibodeau is like relaxing a little bit and he's trying to like uh become a little bit more flexible as a, as a basketball <laughs> coach right <laughs> he realized like what he was doing at, towards the end of his uh time at, with the bulls wasn't working out you know and people were getting injured joe came noah poor, poor joe came noah has, he barely he barely has like a left like foot left <laughs> <laughs> But um, I, I can see them potentially falling. They're, they're going to self-destruct. They they had a feel-good year last year. I think Jimmy Butler's first year was great. I mean, Jimmy Butler's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I like Carl Anthony. I like Cat Carl Anthony yep. Towns a lot, but he's a terrible defender still. Uh, and Wiggins, man, you, that guy just can't get it together like a complete game. Yeah. No, I'm, he doesn't. He needs to dribble me. with his left hand more. I notice he's just he favors his. Well, I, 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 is he left-handed or right-handed? I forgot. But he tends to favor one 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 hand more, and um, he doesn't really have a ra- well-rounded game. No. He's so athletic; he can score, like, and he's getting to become a better shooter. But I think his like his IQ or something, right? He's just he's not like in the right place at the right time, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean that's a knock on him, right? And so signing him to always, that long always term has there, yeah, like, hey, like the guy is probably what twenty three, twenty four. I don't know, but um. You signed to that long-term deal for like was it like 120 million or something? Like, let's see, uh, does he have it in him to um, to really round out his game? Because if he's, if he's self-aware enough, maybe. Yeah. yeah who knows? But, you know. Who knows? The money might make you less self-aware. Yeah. So but, yeah, who else? Who else in the West? Is that? Did we cover everyone? Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. I mean, shout out the Pelicans. I I kind of like lightweight. Love the the Pelicans. I I like that team. I love the coach. I love Alvin Gentry. Mm-hmm. And I think Anthony Davis is completely underrated. I think he's one of the best players. Oh my God, like when, he, when no he, one ever talks about him, like because he's been injured a couple times. People don't realize. Like he's I, I so feel good. like he's that, so good. That one, um, I think the Warriors' first playoff run where they played the Pelicans in the first round. My God, he was so unstoppable. Mm-hmm. I was like, this guy is so smooth shooting, and he's such a beast inside. And he should be like I, when people talk about like the best. Uh, I know the best, like, big man. Yeah. It's like, Embiid's good. You know, Cat's good. Mm-hmm. Anthony Davis is he's still otherworldly. Embiid's catching up, but, like, uh, Anthony Davis is just phenomenal. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. I've uh, seen pictures of that guy when he was, like, tiny in high school. Yeah, he looked like a complete nerd. <laughs> yeah. <but laughs> Unibrow glass, nerd with he glasses. Look, he looked like, like he, a turtle. He... <laughs> Oh, uh, that's that's actually a great list. I think about this sometimes, like top ten NBA players that look like turtles. <laughs> he played point guard. He was like a five eleven point guard in high school, and then he yep. just grew. Yeah, um, those are the legendary stories. Like I remember, who else is there? Dennis Rodman grew. He was a janitor at like an airport in Oklahoma. David Lee, uh, David Robinson, David Robinson, yeah, and, and um, Scottie Pippen. You know, mm, I didn't know that about Scottie Pippen. Yeah, I mean that's why he was such a you know good like dribbler, etc. Really? Huh, that makes sense, huh? That's mm-hmm. like sort of like the sweet spot where you get the foundation, the skills. You don't have the athleticism that that you can just like rely on, so you mm-hmm. take the skills for granted. Um like Andrew Wiggins, right? Mm-hmm. You yeah. just build that foundation and then all of a sudden the athleticism catches up and you're just unstoppable, right? Yeah. I love Anthony Davis. I wish he was a, I wish he played in a bigger market team so more people could appreciate him. Yeah, as long as he doesn't go to the Celtics, I'm good. Yeah, that's the, there's always talk about that, right? You know. Yeah, because it's like the Celtics have the most like cards to deal. Sure. So it's like, hey, if Anthony Davis wants to be traded, then there you go. You're listening to the Oakland Warriors podcast. 
Do you know Oakland Warriors is a website too? OaklandWarriors.com offers a collection of Warriors t-shirts that are comfy, classy, and cool. Fit for a real Warriors fan like you. Forget basic tees and boring designs. With Oakland Warriors, you can show your team pride with those in the know. So come celebrate the new death lineup with Steph, Clay, Draymond, Katie, and Boogie. Rep the Hamptons 5 and show some love for China Clay. I have a shirt from OaklandWarriors.com. It's comfy and soft, and it reps the dubs in a low-key but fun way. Don't believe me? Check out OaklandWarriors.com and use the code PODCAST at checkout for a 10% discount. Since you brought them up, let's talk about the East then, because I think we covered the West, right? Like the Celtics, mm-hmm. the clear number one. Yep. Um, they're getting uh, uh, rejuvenated Kyrie back after mm-hmm. his injury. They're getting Gordon Hayward back, mm-hmm. who only played, what, one game for them? Half a game? <sighs> yeah. How do you think? How do you think they're gonna do? How do you think they're gonna fit in uh, all those all those wings? Um, I think it'll be great. I think uh, they'll. I mean, my guess is. Sorry, before you answer that, follow up question to that: How will they? They will inevitably play the Warriors in the finals, right? So, how do they match up? Is my second is the second part of that question. Uh, I think. I mean, I think they'll match up well. You know, I mean, they have the the defensive ability. They have the scoring ability. They have. The coaching ability and yeah. they have a they have a from what i remember they have a decent bench i mean if they have rogier and smart coming off the bench still yeah and then, smart resigned yeah then uh wh- whichever morris brother i think it's Mar- is it marcus yeah marcus it's marcus yeah yeah tough uh, guy yeah uh both of them are yeah although i never understood why they got so mad when one of them got traded i was like you're when in the, the nba the sons, right yeah it's like hey that i happens. think maybe it was because they were, one of them t- was told that they, oh. the other wouldn't get traded so. yeah well okay oh i mean it sucks to be lied to right yeah so that's terrible yeah yeah that'd be an amazing um finals to be honest i think it would be so much fun to watch because uh, yeah, I mean, imagine Kyrie versus Steph. We've seen that before, but sure. they each have their own strengths and they can't stop each other. Uh, Clay versus Jalen um, or Tatum. I think Tatum would play the three. Yeah, yeah, Tatum played the three. Yeah, and sure. then um, you know, and then you put yeah, KD on Tatum. Oh and, my God! And then wow. um, Tatum is so good. I mean, it depends on if you play Tatum at the four or uh, or Hayward at the. I think four. maybe Jalen comes off the bench, right? I mean, you, put, Hor- you, have you start Morris. And, you start Horford and Baines. Baines. No, no. I don't know. I'm showing my ignorance because <laughs> I actually don't know who they ended up being on their uh, st- in their starting lineup. Oh, thought, okay, okay. Does yeah. Morris come off the bench? Morris comes off the bench. I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But you, you know, without with that being said, I I totally agree with you. Options wise, the flexibility, the length. They can play different the shooting. Styles. They have great defenders. They have a great system in place. An awesome coach. Like I'm legit. Like. As you were talking about the Celtics, I was getting like a little bit of anxiety thinking about <laughs> that finals. I'm thinking about them. I mean, the Warriors are good, and but you take that for granted, like when you're when they're faced with like a, a a sort of like parallel dimension team who's just as good or talented, right? But maybe doesn't have the 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 track record of winning, right? right? And the thing that and they're young, yeah, that, that's the thing that puts they're young man. The real scare in me is because uh, with with Brown and Tatum and Rozier. In particular, like those guys, you know, I mean, Jalen Brown, go Bears. Yeah, <laughs> those guys are are, are uh, presumably like if if Hayward and and um, and Irving kind of are become the leaders of the team again, mm-hmm. then your secondary kind of guys are super young and fearless still, right? Mm-hmm. Like, thankfully, the Warriors aren't like all in their you know mid thirties yet because they're still relatively like young, but th- the Celtics are built to last. They are and. Danny Ainge, who I believe you had a positive experience meeting once. He's a cool dude. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Wouldn't expect that, but that's... Shook my hand. Yeah. Yeah. How old were you? 12 or 13. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm very worried about the Celtics, and I think that they are clearly the number one seed in the East, yeah. barring injury, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I think Toronto, I think uh, the Sixers are probably next mm-hmm. and i can't really think of anyone else that really yeah, <laughs> comes beca- to mind the wizards maybe yeah well, the pacers sure no 
No, because I like the Pacers. I like that team. I like. I, think I do. They, I, th- I think the Pacers will be good. I like, like the. I like the team. I like their players. I like. I, I really think, like Oladipo. Me too. I think he's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I like. Uh, I keep on calling Myers Leonard, but it's uh, Turner, Miles Turner. Mm-hmm. I, I like him too. He Al- almost the same player. I like him because he does hot yoga. He there's a photo of him on, popping up on social media where him and uh, oh yeah, there's an ESPN. Sabonis, yeah, yeah Sabonis doing hot yoga. I think that's cool. Um, I like the I like the Pacers, but I just don't think they're gonna. They're gonna crack the finals. Yeah, they're they're like a player away from getting. But upset, man, they could be good. Yeah. But they also just resigned Nate McMillan to a, a extended contract. So, what are your thoughts yeah. on Nate McMillan as a coach? Uh, yeah, I think he's fine. He's fine. You know, like yeah, like he. Uh, I he don't coached know. the what the the the, the Seattle. Late? He was he was a Seattle Se- coach for a while, right? Was he Seattle? He coached Seattle. He coached uh, the the both Trailblazers, Blazers, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was a Pacific Northwest Northwest guy, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I think he's fine. You know, like I think he could he could win a title the same way Avery Johnson won a title. Sure. You know, uh, do any of those teams in the East that I just mentioned scare you though? Besides the Celtics, no. Just the Celtics, right? Yeah, just yeah. the Celtics because they're stacked, and um, we've seen like. Because Kyrie was like the only other guy on the on the Cavs that scared me. Yeah. Um, and actually, you know, I you see those qualities in like uh, Jalen Brown and and uh, Tatum and Brad Stevens. Yeah. You know, so um, it's I'm curious to see how they kind of mesh together uh, and what kind of player Gordon Hayward is. Yeah. You know. So what do you think their starting lineup is, is going to look like? I mean, starting lineup and also like late game lineup. Oh, late game. Uh, is smart smart will be involved somehow in late game probably yeah i mean i guess it depends too right yeah. like are you gonna put hayward on the bench i don't know man or you could put horford on the bench and go small sure um, horford was great for them last year yeah he was fantastic yeah surprised just like he still has something yeah. um but yeah i mean uh Kyrie, smart brown and tatum are just guys you want on the floor mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and again hayward i, I feel like Unless he's terrible, you almost have to put him out there. Yeah, you know and what was his uh, injury, his leg injury? Uh, Hayward. Yeah, <laughs> he broke his ankle. Oh yeah, that's right. I saw that live on TV. <laughs> Did you see that? I, see, I mean, I, you saw, I, saw the, right? I saw the highlights. Yeah, I was like, oh shit! <laughs> I was like yelling. I was by myself oh, at right. home, and <laughs> and I was like, oh. So you knew it was bad right away. Yeah, because when they cut to him, there's a this famous shot of him when he's on the ground and his ankle his foot is turned outward oh, right man. and he's like looking at it and he's kind of like holding his head he's holding his head and in pain or in just shock shock yeah and then the sh- you know you go and see replays you see the Cavs players because it was close to their bench like like freak out you know and yeah. and just people just it was it was awful man that was that was bad it was, I, for, it was a bummer for him for sure um and i i i that's an injury that you can come back from. And yeah. before that, he was obviously really, really good. Um, but I think, like, those those kinds of situations in the league, I think about how statistically the odds are, you know, if something happens, something else will happen. Right? It's like it's the whole, like, concept of life is not linear. Life is fluid and things, you know, like branches will come out from other branches, right? So, Are, are, my, are you on acid right now? <laughs> I'm still on acid, man. No, my point is... If Gordon Hayward did not get injured, get, got, then Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum would not get the reps that they did, right? Yeah. Jason Tatum frightens me. I think he's going to be the best out of all of them. Yeah. By I, far. I, I think so, too. And I remember, again, I don't follow college basketball, but he's I watched so him. so good, man. I watched him in the Final Four, and I was like, meh. Yeah. Same way I felt about Grand Hill. Everybody's uh-huh. like, Grand Hill. Yeah. Then I was like, That's meh. just your Duke bias, though, probably. Exactly. I was yeah. a big Duke fan in the mid-'80s. Okay. But um, who, who are you not a Because I, I, I think I heard you mention before that you are a Cal and Stanford fan, and I don't. I don't that doesn't work, man. No, it does, because I was an A's and Giants fan. I was, a, I was a Bay Area guy, and I rooted for the teams when I was little. You, that, just, uh, you just can't pick a side. You're, like, you're a waffler. Nope. Nope, because I don't. <laughs> that's not how it works. Like, people made up that that's how it works. Yeah. I, you know? No. No, no, I, no, no, it, no. That's true. This is going to be the issue that uh, d- a- a- ends this uh, podcast. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> we're just never going to be able to come to terms on this. Yeah. Well, one 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 thing is for sure. I was always more of a Niners fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Especially since the Raiders left, and, uh, and then they came back, and I was like, "What?" It's like it's like if if your father left, and then he came back like 
15 years like, later. Hey. <laughs> hey, come on. Like, come you on. know, buy season tickets and let me, let me remodel the house. Just kidding. Just kidding about being in LA for, with my mistress for like 10, 15 yeah, it's years. Like, and then Al Davis, like, let me remodel the house so that like, it looks terrible, you know, and let me put some seats upstairs. I mean, know? yeah, not to digress, but man, that, that organization has the most marketable branding, the Raiders branding. You yeah. see it, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere, right? It's yeah. so, there's so much value to that brand and they just can't get their shit together. It's silly to me because like, I, I understand like fans kind of, you know, travel, you're always a fan of a team and like the Raiders really have that brand. Um, that is, isn't just a place. It's like kind of a state of it, being. Th- I think that's what they talk themselves into maybe. Yeah. Right. But it's what the fans kind of buy too. Cause they I'm do. like, they do like I'm, uh, if if I if I was still in the Bay and I was still a Raiders fan and they left again, I'm like, get the hell out get of here! Fuck, you know? Yeah, get the yeah. fuck out of here! Yeah. Well, the I think the city of Oakland just filed a lawsuit against the the team. Well then, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Have fun in Vegas. I know, right? What were we talking about? We we're talking about the Celtics and how the kind of branches and the acid and the walls are melting type <laughs> thing. But I, I actually agree because uh, when yeah um, Tatum and, J- and Jalen Brown would not have been able to get the reps and yeah. Yeah, uh, Jalen Brown is rookie year. I was like, "Who is this guy?" Because he was. I was like, "He's the third pick. This guy is so mediocre, bro." And, I, and I he followed, was so awesome. I followed him religiously when he was play, when he played at Cal during his freshman year, and every game I was like, "This guy cannot be a top five, top top ten pick. This guy can't dribble. He's constantly <laughs> charging. Like he's he's drawing. He's he's charging into the the the." the um, uh, what's it called? The restricted uh, area. Yeah, like he's he he like other defenders would draw charges on him all the time. He would just barrel into the the restricted area, and he couldn't shoot. I mean, um, athlete like crazy athlete, right? But I was just like, how is this guy going to be as good as people say he he, he is? Right? Um, I was more of an Ivan Rab guy, you know. Oh my gosh, that guy's yeah yeah that guy should have gone out with uh Jalen. he would have been a top 10 pick but anyways yeah like i had no idea like all i'm i'm on like a few convers like conver- the message threads with other cal fans and when Jalen brown was drafted third we were all like beside ourselves <laughs> we're like how is this how is this possible like yeah. this guy could not carry the team on but then you realize oh that wasn't his game right yeah he is a complimentary like St- scotty pippen type of player yep. i think that's his that is his like scotty pippen is his probably his ceiling right mm-hmm. um but he has the intelligence he's the basketball iq and the athleticism to maybe take him there and the hard work like he's like between his rookie year to the last season total total like uh jump mm-hmm. or leap i guess yeah right? yeah i didn't know who he was because i wasn't following college sports and then when i looked him up i was like I cannot believe this guy was like the uh, the third pick, but because the injuries, he had his opportunity because he would have been relegated to the bench. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and now like you know, you get Draymond saying that the guy deserves to be an all star and all this other stuff. And yep. I mean, he's he's a he's a fun player to watch. Well, did know? Draymond really say that? Yeah, he did. Wow, yeah. it probably means it. Draymond doesn't like say things like that frivolously, right? No, <laughs> he doesn't just talk. No, he, yeah. To wrap that up, the the West, uh, I'm not really scared of anyone, but the Lakers should be cool. And mm-hmm. we live in L.A., so that should be interesting. Yep. Um, the Rockets are not going to be as bad as we thought they were, but they're still not going to beat the Warriors. Yeah. Um, OKC will be good, but not as good as, you know, they want to be, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yep. and, and the Celtics. That's pretty much it, right? Yeah. 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 And um, barring injury, I feel uh, like the Warriors' chances are pretty good. Yeah, the we've talked about Demarcus Cousins on this podcast already. I'm just chomping at the bit to see how he fits in. So. Yeah, I mean it's one of those things where because we know the intention is not for him to re-sign with the Warriors after this season, mm-hmm. that uh, it's going to be this sliver <laughs> yeah. of of games where if he's at all like you know you know seventy to eighty to God. You know, if he ends up being like ninety percent of what he what he's been in the past, of seeing literally the greatest starting lineup of all time. Sure. You know, I mean, you can't you can't name anybody else like from f- one to five. Mm-hmm. You know, who's, who's been better? You know, mm-hmm. what I mean, you can maybe name a one to two. You know, but not one to five. One to five possible all stars, all possible all stars, all potentially could make an all NBA team in the same season, and all potentially will be in the hall of fame 
Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. you'll never see that again. Yeah. Well, you will, but, yeah. I think I listened to, like, a, a Bill Simmons podcast, and, and he was... Shout out. <laughs> Shout out Bill Simmons. <laughs> Competitor. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> he, he, better, uh, he better watch out for us, right? Like... Uh, Coming for you. Only yeah. a couple miles <laughs> Only a couple miles away. A couple miles and millions and millions <laughs> of followers. But, uh, um, you know, and he was saying that the 86 Celtics would be um the other team that he would consider sure and i yeah. was like yeah and i'm like oh come on man well bird you know? mikhail parish dj walton off the bench dj um i think he was talking about starters though and mm-hmm. start, like starting five um and then danny ainge no was he off he was, the bench he was off the bench yeah uh who was their shooting guard <laughs> drawing a blank yeah i don't know either yeah so yeah, I, 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 I personally, I, was, I think I was only like five at the time, so <laughs> I don't really have that like personal like sort of experience, you know. Yeah, I, I was like one. Yeah, rolling the <laughs> eyes. <laughs> but uh, I personally, when I heard that, I was like, oh man, that is like blatant bias right there. Because but that's his that's his mo, yeah. right? You can't get mad at that because he's like he's an admitted homer, you know, yeah. to, to the fullest. Or have we admitted admitted that? Well, this bas- this basketball podcast is dedicated to the team, so yeah. Yeah, but we're, we're objective. Objective, yeah. I think our, <laughs> but then I think our objectivity comes from the the legacy of failure that this team has, right? So, objectivity nonetheless. Sure. All right. Thanks for tuning in to the Oakland Warriors podcast. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, OaklandWarriors.com, buy a t-shirt. And give us a rating on iTunes if you like the what you're hearing. And uh, feel free to give us some feedback, too. This is Patrick. This is Sean. Peace. See ya. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Jeff Oki as well as Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time. And go Dubs. Go Dubs.